Welcome back. All week we're delving into the world of the weird and wonderful in our Supernatural Week, which I'm assuming is why Holly's really not here today. <laughs> yeah. The honest reason, not the cold at all. <laughs> Since uh, the beginning of time, a number of people have claimed to have had sexual encounters with a ghost at some point in their lives. Well, uh, Natasha uh, Blazik is no exception. She claims she's been visited twice by a ghost and says both experiences have been amazing. Mm -hmm. She joins us live from LA alongside one of Hollywood's best known psychics, Patty Negri, and in the studio, Dr. Kieran O'Keefe, who says such things don't exist and of course there is a much more plausible reason. Uh, good morning everybody. Um, Natasha, if we can come to you first, if you could just give us some sort of an idea of what these experiences were. Okay, I mean first of all, I wouldn't say I claim that I had a sexual experience with a ghost, but I can tell you what actually happened. And um, I was in a room by myself, I was at home and I was lying in bed and then I felt that something entered the room and um, I couldn't see anybody and suddenly I could feel that um, uh, somebody was touching me and uh, the hands were pushing me against my will and then I could feel the, the weight of the body on the top of me and I couldn't see anybody but um, then it's like continued I could feel the I could feel the pressure I could feel the energy the warmth and then it's the, my body was pushed in different mm -hmm. directions <laughs> and I just first I was like very confused with all that but uh, then I just decided to relax and uh, it was really really pleasurable and uh, I really enjoyed it and this is what happened I and then I told uh, about this uh, to Patty and she said that uh, that's a ghost so. well it's interesting because <laughs> I mean you think of Think of that happening in any of our in any of our rooms uh, uh, tonight, and that you are forcibly pushed down onto the bed, um, and then um, a, a sexual encounter takes place. In those initial stages, I suppose, until it became pleasurable, I mean, you'd be screaming the house down. You are you are under a spectral attack. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of a girl that I actually enjoy this thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was very. <laughs> I don't know. No, it was very confusing, and uh, and there was something very common about this. So I did not scream, obviously. <laughs> and so it was, it, was it was it one of those one of those experiences that uh, that when it was when it was over? I mean, did the did the ghost say thank you, or um, or did it just yeah. leave? <laughs> Yeah, took a bow. Um, <laughs> I guess the ghost just left, but then it came back in a, in a month. And uh, so a month later, it happened again. Yes, uh, again it happened twice. And was it was it as good the second time? Um, <laughs> it was kind of the same thing. It was um, you can see anything, but you can feel the the touch, the pressure, the push, the so this is what happened and, and that was, was like felt so and it was it was full on ghostly sex um yeah yeah and i know you're being very <laughs> careful and you're very sweet to be very careful but uh, um uh, bearing in mind what yes. time what time yes. but nevertheless yes. i think yes. it's important to to uh, to get to the nub of things here no, 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 um, yes, yes. that this is this is full full on penetrative sex by a ghost the way you put it, it sounds i know big. i know i know but it's got to be said <laughs> Um, yes, it felt like that. Wow, wow. Okay. Well, Patty, this, this isn't the, the most unusual case, actually. I mean, you have come across this before. Yes, I have come across this for years. By, I have clients literally worldwide that have had this experience. Um, and it's not that uncommon. It's not that talked about. But I have many, many clients and friends and associates a lot of people actually have this after their spouse passes, somebody who may have been married for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and oftentimes in their time of mourning is when their spouse comes back. And it's real. It is real. When somebody says, you know, I'm going to love you forever, they really do. Which is a, lo it's a lovely thought, but are all of these experiences pleasant or, or are some of them unwanted advances? Um, no, they are not all pleasant by any means. Just like human sex, sex with humans, there's good experiences and bad. 
There is but um, how do you throw by choice. Off, how do you throw off a ghost if you don't want it to happen? <laughs> well, actually, you can. This is our realm of existence. This is my specialty, which I have been doing and learning my entire life. This is our realm of existence. People become victim because they allow themselves to. All you have to do is claim your power. If it's something you don't want, if something's coming in, whether it's a sexual experience or not, you put your foot down in the name of whoever you believe in, in the name of God, in the name of angels, in the name of cat. It's the intention behind it. Truly, it works. 99.999% of the time, that is our realm of existence. And people just, they don't know that. They get frightened or they pull back and that's when the other side takes over. But oddly enough, Natasha, you kind of are quite sad that it hasn't happened since you enjoyed it so much <laughs> that you're quite looking for this ghost to come back again. <laughs> I mean, it was fun. It was fun. Um, I think um, ever since I was a child, I was always wanted to know if there is anything more to this world, and I was always asking the questions. And uh, I think that made me feel like kind of reassured that there is something more that we can see with our naked eye. Mm -hmm. And it gave me a comfort, and it gave me support and love. And I, I felt, I mean, it's, it did answer questions um, for me, yeah. you know, if there is something else out there. You, uh, you are married, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. What does your husband think about this? <laughs> he's a skeptic. He says, whatever happens in your dreams, it's fine. So he's not, he's not worried about you cheating with Casper? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> Would you? Would you worry? No, well, I don't know. I think I might, I might wonder... It does you know, sound amazing, to be where, fair, doesn't it? <laughs> what you're saying is the ghost is a good lover. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Chris, Christine's fascinated by that, quite obviously. Ask the question. <gasps> was he a good lover? Was he a good lover? Yes. Hmm? They, Natasha, she's very yes, honest. That's she's very nice. honest. They, like, you know, you don't see anybody, so, but it's very pleasant, and it's, I don't know, it's made me feel... Warm and fuzzy. <laughs> well, which is, you know, what a what experience. Kieran is uh, is sitting with us here, and Kieran, you say there's a very simple explanation to this. Yes, I think what we're dealing with is sleep paralysis. I mean, not to take anything away from Natasha's experience and the fact that she feels it answers questions and she had quite a positive outcome from it. It it's sleep paralysis. This idea that when you're in bed, you're lying down, and your body goes into a paralysis mode. And it's kind of a, to protect you from danger, to protect you from getting up and walking around, to enacting your dreams. You go into paralysis, but then your eyes open, your body's still in that paralysis, but you're fully aware of what's around you. And generally what happens is we feel as though there's an intruder in the room because our brain is trying to make sense of the factors. Why am I paralysed, yet why can I see around me? And so you get sleep paralysis occurring with incidents of incubus, which is what we've got here, or alien abductions, which you were talking about yesterday. Sleep paralysis is a very good explanation for both of those paranormal phenomena. Has it happened to you? It has happened Sleep to me once, yeah. About 15 years ago, um, I was quite fortunate um, for it to happen to me because I'd heard about lots of these cases. It was different for me because I didn't panic. I didn't see the negative side of it because I knew what was happening to my body. So I just lay there wriggled my toes, which is a way of coming out of sleep paralysis, and just acknowledged that it had happened. But the thing about it was that I can understand how horrific it can be for people, because you are genuinely paralysed, even to the point where, and I'm not sure if it was the case for Natasha, where you're paralysed and you can't speak. You can't call out, you can't say, get off me, you can't do anything like that. But a lot of it is down to interpretation. When the intruder is in the room, how does your brain interpret that intruder? They interpret it as a ghost that's there, or an actual intruder, or an alien, or, we go back in history, we talk about things like the old hag phenomena. And that's kind of an early interpretation of what was happening when somebody was pressing on your chest when you were... That'd be my speak. luck in the middle of the night. <laughs> old <laughs> hags. The old hags arrived. <laughs> yes, they have all the ghostly spectres available. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'd yeah. wander, wander yeah. in. I, I do, I do, in seriousness, want, want to just to put that, uh, finally, that point to you, is that uh, yeah. here is the uh, parapsychologist who says it's actually quite easily explained, and it's sleep paralysis. Well, one thing... I mean, one... Oh. Yeah. Oh, I was, was going to say, with my clients, yes, that is real. Sleep paralysis is a very common thing, but that doesn't account for the sexuality, 
within it. I think they're two different things. I think you're right. Um, very, very many of the cases, especially the negative cases, that feel like you're being assaulted against your will. But the ones that are pleasurable, the ones that are very, very sexual, it seems like two very, very different experiences working with the people I work with. Yeah. I want to actually say that I think I have one of those experiences and I could feel uh, the pressure and I could move and I remember it very well, but it was different and yeah. uh, I know the difference and uh, actually, yeah, it was, I happened to me a couple of times, especially when I was younger, yeah. I could like, you awake but you cannot move, you feel the pressure and you're kind of paralyzed basically. But it was different, it was different. That's why I was like, okay, that's something that I did not experience before. Well, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Uh, and we've, we've learnt a lot. It's been fascinating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Natasha, I, I, I hope that, uh, I mean, if your husband doesn't mind, then that's absolutely fine, that, that he, the, the spectre turns back up once again and, and you have another lovely evening, um, which is a <laughs> nice, it's a cheap night out, isn't it? That's for sure. And, uh, and, and Patty, thank you very much indeed for, your, you. for your expertise. Thank it's thank safe you. sex, isn't it? Thank safe you very sex. Much. You're thank welcome. You. There's no, no hope of, you know, Pregnancy or anything like you no phantom pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh you never my know. goodness! <laughs> uh, thank oh, you. Oh, I guys. picked a good day to come in, didn't you I? Didn't you just? Yes, yes. Oh, well, thank you, Kate. Very good indeed. <gasps> okay, right. still to come. We uh, kick off our new series, Weight Loss Wedding, next. This morning.